We have to begin this sometime or we'll be here all night. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Awaken Hidden Truth with Scott Lemriel. Hello, Scott. Hi, Thank Perry. you for being with us again. Perry and I were talking about the film business and why certain books are popular with kids and why things become a phenomenon. And most of it's because people, children, relate to having personal power they can't have as children under their parents' jurisdiction. So when things are put out where kids can be the heroes or have the superpower and the big ego that goes with it, they gravitate to it. But it's really kind of a negative thing. It's fun. It's entertaining. Um, but it doesn't really help people on Earth get free or remember why they came here, how they came to be on this planet with no memory of who or what they are before this life. And that's kind of a trap for beings, whether they're little kids or adults or old people. So getting across to people on Earth, a planet like this, something that actually will trigger them to remember and recover free will and the ability to know the universe and to comprehend it and be able to play in it, be able to travel in it, Human beings are capable of it, but on Earth they're not taught any of this growing up. On the contrary, they're taught to be riveted to the illusion that they're a physical body, that they're stuck in this lifetime and they can't remember anything. That's maya, that's illusion, that's a trap. So the real challenge for beings from other worlds to save this planet from being annihilated from the leaders who will blow it up or ruin it some sooner or later because they're driven by making decisions based on fear, subconscious motivation, subconsciously motivated fear. And when people make decisions based on fear, they're always incorrect, always without exception. Fear is a negative emotion. It creates an, a reaction in time space that comes back as a negative thing. It's an artificially created emotion. It's not even part of the human being's real emotion. The human body, people call it, isn't even the shape and structure of the actual atma or soul. It's spherical. <laughs> Nobody's taught that on Earth. It's actually spherical, like a planet yeah. or a sun or a star. Those yes. things are made in the image of their creators. That's yes. important. <laughs> okay. You were talking about the books from the beginning, right? So I want to mention about your books now because I have my own channel in Thai, right? People people who watch my channel, they start knowing about your books because it comes from, I went on live on one channel, you know, and then I sent out the hue. I, I sent out very low, very low tone, you know, not, I mean, not that loud. So, but people hearing something else beside my, my voice, my tone, right? They hear like the men's, the men's voice, the group of people sending you in the same time, and they start having their own experiences. So that's why they get into your books, you know, to get more experience. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing, you know, with your work. We thank you for that. No, oh, you're welcome. It's just that it's difficult to get any mass of people any real numbers of people on this earth getting my books because fear of the present and the future is in the way of them taking action it's not about the money it's not the cost of the book i make far less than amazon's owner does on every book sale he charges 40 percent of the retail price for the right to use his company to print on demand and get books to people around the world it's print on demand facilities and then an author gets 60%, but that's after he deducts $9.70 for the cost of printing the book. For example, I might get $2.47 of a $20 new hardback book that's coming out for both books. He'll get over $5. He isn't the author. He doesn't promote it. He acts like a publisher, but he does nothing to promote anything unless you pay him or pay more. This is the way publishers work. Another company, Ingram, gets books into bookstores around the world. That's not Amazon. So I have contracts with two different companies that print the books on demand and get them in different situations. One works to get them in the bookstores, which existed before uh, the owner of Amazon was even a child. And then they had print-on-demand facilities. They first developed that. And, and the other ones that where people can get the books online is through Amazon. And if you can't get it through Amazon, because in Thailand there's no Amazon, you can get it by ordering at a bookstore because Ingram will get it there. That's the real nature of, of, of uh, being an author. It's not a 
free ride and it's not an easy ride. It's difficult to get across waking up in others deliberately hidden truth because from birth they've been surrounded by a planet of fellow beings that mainly want to keep themselves stuck in one lifetime being entertained until it's too late to change anything and then they're born again reincarnated again when a person passes from this life they take with them only what they're aware of if they're afraid and in fear of the present and the future those set up conditions for their next incarnation where they're compelled to live back here again there is no permanent heaven out there where people can go and stay forever just because they believe something they have to be trained people have to actually know what they're doing in order to be able to serve in some higher reality and not just mess the place up you can't take people like spoiled children and free them in the higher worlds without real direct experience training and people on earth don't know this they're kept in the dark about this so the people the beings I work with from other worlds from parallel and higher dimensions are very real the master teachers who can really help people get free to remember who they are how they came to be born on this earth why they're here why they were made to forget everything and then they look in the mirror and think they're a body. And then they're worried about this growing old and passing away. And no matter how rich or how powerful, how much money but anybody has on this planet, or how important they think they are, they can't take any of it with them. In a few short trips around the sun on this planet, their body gets old, stops working, and they have to leave. They can't take any of it, except what they're aware of. And that's the most important treasure there is to be aware of what's in the higher dimensions, the other realities, from direct experience is more valuable than all the treasures in the universe. Because when the body stops, if you're aware of what the higher dimensions are, if you're aware of planets that are way more evolved than Earth, where human beings live, you can go there instead of here. But you cannot go there unless you're aware of it, unless you're mature enough to be trusted with such freedom. It's just that simple. I'm stating the truth as it really is right now on this radio show. Not pulling any punches. It would be great if real wisdom of light and sound of spirit would enter the world's religions on this planet. Not just faith, but the ability to have direct experience about what they believe in. Not just believe in something, but take it the next step which is the experiential part of it. So, uh, you know, getting in touch with beings that people are not exposed to on Earth, teachers they don't even know exist, is very important because the greater God that people worship is out there in the multiverse, not just on this one little planet. It's arrogance beyond understanding to believe that. If you're trained as a PhD scientist in physics and you teach in a university and you're not classified, you're not allowed to know extraterrestrials exist because that's way beyond their classification, then they're going to teach theory. They're going to teach, they think there might be life on other planets. Then you get a classified scientist that's a PhD that works in the classified, highly classified, secretive military industrial complex around the world. They can't tell their fellow professors what they know. And they know extraterrestrials exist and come here. Disclosure that people are looking for, whatever few there are on this earth, is beginning to take place. It's not being controlled by people on earth or any government. It is something that beings from other worlds have presented to certain leaders on this planet and told them we have to do this. Or world earth will not survive. The way people are misdirecting things, the leaders, from fear, subconscious fear they grew up with. They're making decisions about where to put money and what to do and what to invest in all of the world wrong every day. They think they're doing right until it backfires and bites them in the ass. And then they have to throw money to try to fix that problem because it didn't work out like they thought it did. This is a problem for this planet because you don't need a nuclear war to end life here. Global warming alone will do that. And people aren't putting the money where they should to fix it. They could fix it. The technology is capable of it. They're not putting it there. That's a problem. So 
to save this world from its own abuse, misdirection, especially the way people misuse their imagination in fearful ways. It's got to come from outside this planet, from being sort of motivated for whatever reason, finally, to intervene in this planet at least enough to enough degree to get us to grow up and not destroy ourselves. Then we can take our place out there among the stars and get technology and healing and disease all taken care of because that's ancient out there, not new. Antigravitic ships are old, ancient. People on Earth are playing in rocket ships going, how do we go faster than the speed of light and all this silly stuff? If they respected the energy that's in space outside of the atmosphere of this planet, what they call toroidal or zero-point energy, it's a conscious living energy, whether they want to admit it or not, it's not an individual being, but you have to work respectfully with that if it's going to give you the secrets of how to get around the multiverse. There are rules to this, safeguards in the way that system works. Earth people are not even working together as one planet. They have radical beliefs and in, in religious beliefs and things like that, each of them dedicated, sincere, I'm sure, all over the world, but they're fighting each other over things they've been taught to believe from birth that they have not experienced themselves, not really. So at the core of it is people are still afraid of death. And the fact is they can't die because they're not one of these. They are a spherical energy. It has structure, what they call soul without knowing what it is. And it runs one of these through the pineal gland in the center of the brain. And this information, this knowledge was taken from people and manipulated long ago in galactic history. And they're stuck on Earth with no memory. And I'm talking about everybody on Earth one or two exceptions and if there are those that know they don't speak about it because people fears their fears will attack people who try to tell them a way to, into freedom how to work with beings from other worlds who know the secrets who know how to transform a world safely the beings I work with are don't give a hoot about running governments on this planet they don't want to take it over they want people in governments and in the populace to grow up and work together as one people. They want one world government here that's benevolent and kind, that is in association with other governments and other worlds where they've solved these problems we're struggling so hard to solve. Global warming, unlimited energy, get rid of fossil fuels. These are simple things to fix for more advanced races. And if we want their help and we are going to need it, we have to request it at some point. That's what real disclosure is all about. I don't know how many people will watch this radio show, Perry, but I can tell you people in the classified community will watch it. And when they listen to it and they know that I know and that it, beings from other worlds come here and they have for a long time, they also know that I'm simply sharing with them what they've already been told. They have to make a true disclosure. If they want to survive, people in these countries want to live the next 10 years, they're going to have to cooperate with beings from other worlds. It's just that simple. Doesn't matter what anybody believes. This thing people call God is so much more vast than they've ever understood on this planet. And it, 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 it operates supporting life, countless trillions of worlds on many dimensional levels. And it's runs that energy through that so-called void in space between planets and moons and stars and suns and galaxies. That is not a nuclear atomic energy at all. It's not protons, electrons, atoms. It's not radioactive. It's the energy behind that. They know, even scientists, the more advanced ones on Earth know. They call that the God particle because it doesn't obey or observe. It doesn't work according to laws of physics. It's something else. If you want to go faster than the speed of light, you've got to work with that energy, or you will never do it. Other races have figured this out. They're willing to share that with this planet. The leaders on this world, out of fear of denied, refused it. They want to develop weapons and technology to defend themselves from the bad aliens. Have you ever noticed that no bad aliens have ever come here and blown up our cities? Never. Why? 
It wasn't military and governments on this planet that's prevented that. It's racists from out there that have policed that and prevented that. And people on Earth have a right to know what's really helping them here, because it's not our governments yet. They could do it. This planet could become harmonized, but they're going to need some help, some coaching, some counseling from beings who know how to do it, who have done it millions of years ago. Those beings I know aren't going to put themselves above the people on Earth and lord things over them. That's not what this is about. Enough said on that. Get your two books, I would say. They are doorways to connect to the upper worlds and to master beings, and then they can help with you. All right. Perry and I realize these books are not yet in another language. For people who don't know the process of publishing, running a publishing company, or what it takes to write, proof, edit a book, how many professionals involved to do it right, it takes a lot of money and personnel to do this. And then you have to give away a lot of that profit to people who will print on demand or put it out in the world, in stores or, in, or online. That's why they're so rich. They're making money like this uh, off of everybody. Huge amount compared to what the author makes. And that's okay. I mean, they have, they have their facilities, their way of getting things out there, and we have to agree with it. Or it doesn't get in people's hands. If I want to print these books entire Japanese, I can't do it by myself with the funds I have. It takes a lot of money and a lot of personnel, top editors, and, and promoting that isn't just hiring third-party uh, social media marketing companies. I spent $40,000 in four years hiring companies like that. Never increased book sales one bit. None. The only thing that's worked is my personal appearance on radio shows, Coast to Coast AM, once years ago, four or five years ago, haven't been on since. When I talk personally with people, they get more involved. The kind of work I do cannot be like a cookbook where I show people recipes of how to make wonderful dishes that don't kill animals, doesn't use and gives you better protein, it tastes better. There are people out there becoming very successful doing this. It's a service. But I can't get on a, a, a YouTube and show people something in a series of weekly YouTube videos that shows them how to cook, remembering and waking up, because it requires that they do the work. It's like if you watch some chef produce some incredible thing made of mushrooms that tastes better than steak, and it shows you how to do it, that's a service because you're getting away from the raising and slaughtering of masses of animals to feed people who think they must eat flesh of animals to live. I don't eat them. I don't eat seafood. I don't eat any of that. I'm fine. It's an illusion that people are programmed in from birth. So the perpetuation of that pall of energy around the worth of all these suffering creatures, including humanity, perpetuates itself in a way that would destroy the environment, ultimately kill all life here. You don't need a nuclear war to do that anymore. Just the way people are mismanaging energy, um, technology would do that. So books and um, how do I put it? For a large number of people to be benefited by the work I do, it's going to take more people coming out of the woodwork to assist it than I can do on my own. I've taken it a long ways. But it requires the waking up of other fellow beings on this planet, some that have great amounts of money, that could throw a little bit this way and not really suffer from it at all. And if they have a conscience, they realize money is just energy. It isn't something you can possess because it will trap you every time. It's just energy in the form of paper or gold. <laughs> or it's in a uh, I, 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 was... I need to finish this because there are certain beings on this planet that are being trained when they're out of their bodies at night. This is a fact. They're being prepared to let go of the illusion of their entrapment on this planet. So their funds can be used in ways with their complete involvement that will benefit change in this planet, saving it from going extinct. And they are being worked with. I work with some. Beings I know are doing this. 
Even certain beings in the military industrial complex are being trained now in different ways, in ways they couldn't have before, to help get this place turned around. It has to come from outside this planet. The mass of people on this planet and its leaders are too unconscious, too far away from remembering how they got here to solve this destructive direction they're headed in time. It has to come from outside. That's part of disclosure. Real disclosure takes place when governments actually step up to the podium and announce, here's what we had to keep from you all these years because we wanted you to build a destroyed world after World War II. We wanted you to be baby boomers and feel safe that your militaries could protect you. The fact is, there are races out there, most of them benevolent, that could take this planet over in an hour without a single shot being fired if they wanted to. So it's an illusion to continue this game of destructive weaponization. They people on Earth think they're going to take that out in space and fight over the spoils of planets they conquer. This will never take place, ever. Space is already occupied by more advanced races. That's part of disclosure. There is a safe way to tell this to people worldwide without riding in the streets, and that's going to require the energy, the expertise, and the wisdom of beings from other worlds to pull this off, and the master teachers they work with, who know more about the source behind all life than anybody on Earth, because they experience it. They don't just believe it, they experience it. That's all I need to say about that, and it's important that it gets out in this way. I'm not here for power and fame and fortune. I have no illusion about this body being kept here immortalized forever. I'm here to help make change, predominantly with friends from out of town. When I say out of town, I mean off world. That's it. So I am going to publish the hardback books. Yeah, just to make them available for people. That's all. Yes, uh, some people ask me, like, I should share more experience, you know, what I what I have with from your work, you know, and then because I don't talk much, but I would like to you say, should. yeah, by reading your books, your two books and with uh, help from master beings from all of towns, you know, I could recall who I am more and more like I could remember life, life after lifetimes, maybe more than 500,000 years ago. This is, I don't mention it, you know, but this is my own experience. But, and beside that, I could learn more like a mechanic of the universe as well. I understand more how it works, you know, how it functions. And I could I go back to the way I am with the source, you know, that that's how I recall me as a being, as Atma, from your books and you, Scott, and from the beings. So that is why I'm here to telling you Please get God's books, you know, and read them, and you get help from master beings and to remember who you are. It helps. So maybe you should share with them some experiences that helped enlighten you, recover what you were made to forget when you were born here. That would be very helpful because people don't really understand or comprehend that they can actually, under the right circumstances, recover what they were made to forget before they were compelled to be born here with no memory, mm -hmm. none or little about where they came from before here. Yeah, and from your books, you know, because you were talking about the secondary implants and implants that we, have, we should be, should be removed, should be removed from... from but not from, by me. Not yeah, by yeah. You. There are beings in the universe, in the physical universe from other worlds that are highly trained, who have had to solve problems that tyrant races created half a million years ago at the before and during and at the end of a great war. They know how to remove subconscious negative drives that compel people to feel an emotion, a negative emotion, and fear the present and the future. And then it kicks into the imagination and people start creating positive and negative things on earth. They're trained this way. Most people are producing probably a little more negative than positive overall in every day. Even if you're wealthy, you've still got fear of losing the wealth or fear of another country or something. So people are, what they don't understand is that when we imagine something and feel something, you can measure it on an oscilloscope. It has a micro voltage. It goes out in a wavelength from you into the universe, into the atmosphere of the earth and affects other things. It affects the energy that supports life, planets, moons, suns, stars, galaxies. Toroidal zero-point energy, that void in space is pure energy. It's not a void. 
at all. It looks black to human eyes, but if you get above the body and look at it, it's a white golden light. It's powerful. It's not nuclear energy. And it's the most of the energy in the universe. It's what's huge that little galaxies float in. And there's all this huge space. Atmas or souls are comprised of the same energy, what people call divine spirit. They pray to it all the time, but they don't understand it. They need to work with it creatively and use their imagination properly with it. This is not taught people on Earth, unfortunately. Not yet. It will be. But this is so people can have a direct communion with the source behind all life while they're living out lives and in incarnations on planets. Other races on countless world systems know how to do this. If people want to play among the stars from Earth, they're going to have to grow up. <laughs> they're going to have to be reliable, trustworthy. And then that technology and what these people can bring to Earth at no cost or charge can be provided. Certain criteria have to be met first. Even the extraterrestrials I work with do not recommend full disclosure right away. People riot in the streets and hoard toilet paper over COVID. What are they going to do if they find out the truth about the extraterrestrial issue? You see, there's real cause for concern. Uh, that means the way to disclose what they people have kept classified at great expense and great abuse to life too in some ways meaning well is going to require the assistance of advisors and people who know how to do this without destruction without rioting in the streets without taking over our governments this is the biggest fear people on earth have that they're going to be taken over they would have already been taken over there are races that tried to take everybody over illegally breaking an off-world treaty that was policed and stopped from outside this planet. It was not done from people here. Ships have been shot down or shot at from people on Earth from other worlds. Some of them were coming here decades ago to do some no good. Most of them aren't. And that was stopped. Abductions by little greys do not take place on this planet anymore. Reptilians aren't in bases underground. They, people keep putting this fear out. It keeps people stuck, just stuck. It's not helpful. And it's because of beings from other worlds that those kinds of races are no longer allowed to come into our solar system. Earth is a quarantined solar system, not by us. That's part of disclosure too. I can say it now, but the governments will say it at some point. When they can finally take the courage to step forward and realize they're safe, no one's going to blow up the cities or anything else, and then they'll come forward and tell the truth, and they'll get the help from beings from other worlds to keep the calm in the populace. A certain energy field, an enlightening field of energy can be brought here to do that. We've got to get people up to a point all over the world where they want to join the larger family of what they call God. Because it's not just on Earth, that's for sure. It's out there. And it's in higher realities as well. We all come from a much higher reality. And over a long period of time end up running bodies with no memory on Earth. Thinking we're one of these. No wonder people are so afraid. How could they be otherwise raised on a planet like this? It's a very backward place. You don't even have two countries that get along, much less a whole world. How can we expect to go out and play among world systems that hundreds of millions of planets work together in harmony and we're supposed to throw Earth fighting countries between China and Russia and the United States into that mix? They're never going to tolerate that. Never. And you wouldn't either if you were in their shoes. So if we want to play out there, we're going to have to get over some of these petty attachments to power and crap nonsense life's short in one body most people live a life believing in something and never experiencing anything and then they die and their fear propels them back into another incarnation on some world somewhere without any memory they're afraid to remember 
No being in the universe has ever been destroyed or killed. Only bodies come and go. When people on earth finally realize that, this world will be changed virtually overnight. To do that, we have to accept the assistance, the kind offering and assistance of people from other worlds, many of them human. This playground people call heaven is multidimensional and it's much bigger than people on earth have ever been led to believe. And there's a way to work with it properly. So I want to put that out for the benefit of listeners. It's not about money. I don't charge anything, anybody for doing this. Okay. This is one book. This picture right here is what you look like, not one of these. And it runs one of these. It has structure. It's made of little teardrop shaped lights in different layers. It's spherical. It's made of the same energy as the supreme source, what people call the supreme being, which isn't something to be worshipped. It's something to be respected. There is a difference. We're meant to respect the source behind all life and each other because then we have love. So when you look at this picture she's going to show you, that's what it really yeah. look like. That's what people call soul, not this. That's what's created in the image of the source, not this. Just knowing this one thing on earth can change people's lives because they used to know it long ago. Thanks, Barry. Okay. So this book is about, and this is a ship station, the ice chunks that make up the rings of the planet Saturn, our solar system. These are 30 foot, 35 foot scout craft, very modern, current. It's a mile long cylindrical ship. It is a Emerald Star cruiser. This book is about what's changed out amongst extraterrestrials and their teachers from parallel and higher dimensions that has got them focused on Earth in a kind way for the first time. In a way where they're willing to intervene, not by controlling Earth, but by helping people grow up. This is important. We're not alone in the universe. We never have been. There are techniques in the back of this book working with the first primal sound behind all creation that beings can connect directly to it, to know things again to be confident. That's in this book. This book, The Sayers of Jenna, The Emerald Doorway, this is about what happened long ago in a far more ancient history on this planet involving extraterrestrials. This is a scene over ancient Lemuria before, after it was destroyed and new continents were formed. And this master teacher is instructing these three. This is not human. This is a very highly intelligent being who has natural Levitation or uh, anti-gravitic abilities as an organic silica-based creature is not from Earth. And he's introducing them really to what they really are. They don't know this yet, but this is they have one of these smaller hovering above their heads. This is about how things happened in the past with the last polar flip of this planet that's brought us to this point. So it connects the past with the present and where we're headed in the future. There are two more books. Now, there's two more of these. Yes, your book, Emerald Doorway. This book helped me to recall who I am. I have two lives here from this book, you know, amazing. There's 30 illustrations of characters and a few scenes in this book, very well done, that'll help you visualize what is necessary because the key to waking up in freedom is through the imagination. And the imagination does not get created in the human brain. It, it does not have that capability. They got that all wrong on Earth. Imagination doesn't come from the brain at all. And we're going to find a source there where it comes from, even if they think it does. A bunch of brain cells aren't projecting a motion picture camera and a bunch of brain cells so it's a motion picture screen so they can see stuff. It is this that's hovering above these bodies that people in what we call daydreaming see somewhere else because they don't want to be where they are. It is this that sees the, into the other realities, the real true them. So the imagination is really coming from what a being really is, not from a body that are running on any planet. Um, when a person begins to recover this awareness, 
things change. I mean, their their level of comprehension expands. Their their IQ goes up tremendously. The only thing blocking any of this is fear. Fear of the present, fear of the future. As long as people on earth are promoting fear of the present and the future, they're not doing anybody any good. It's a simple fact of physics. Every action creates an equal and opposite reaction. And this includes thoughts and feelings. So people on earth need to recover their ability to imagine properly. And they'll sort their lives out. Okay, Perry. You want to share one of your experiences with your, your listeners? I think it'd be a good idea. Just pick one and share it. Uh, which one? Um, yeah, there's, I don't know which one. There's so many because you just asked me. It just come up like this. But what, what I miss the most is like I could recall who I am even back like a million years ago. You know, Scott, amazing. And all the, all the way through this awakening path, there are beings, master beings always come up and, and support me and help me. By learning, you know, sometimes I would say like energy callings, like when I'm doing something and suddenly I feel like, okay, there is energy is like downloading into me. So I'm ready to get to learn something new. And then I just visualize and see things, you know, like, like how the universe work, the mechanic works, for example, you know, and then go back to many lifetimes to see who I was different different shapes different forms for example <laughs> today that's it for now because uh that's great yeah. you work with a sound there is a sound that people can make and it comes from the first half of the word human it can't be owned or possessed by any organization religion or esoteric group on this planet because it does not belong to them they did not create it, it was brought to this world from other worlds and other dimensions it is a way that the spherical you hovering above a body can and send out with your vocal cords or even just your imagination, a sound which opens certain faculties in the pineal gland and connects to other realities. Not only past time track, but beings and things in other worlds and other dimensions. People when their body dies have to go somewhere anyway. They're not gonna go to some free ride in some heaven forever without learning and understanding the nature of the multidimensional creation. This is required in order to be in some permanent heaven and be a co-creator, somebody that actually contributes something constructive to that source. It's required. So there is no permanent place people can go until they accept the responsibility and the freedom that goes with utilizing their creative imagination, how they see things properly. It's important because uh, beings in other worlds have found out how to do this. Whole planets do this. They don't have children grow up ignorant of any of this. They know how to do it. They can help people on Earth do this because the fact is people on Earth did not originate here anyway. That's another big mystery people have been blinded from seeing that they didn't originate here human beings did not evolve on this planet not out of fish or amoebas or monkeys or neanderthal or cro or any of that extinct species stuff human beings are very ancient and they evolved out in other galaxies and other planets long ago and they were brought here many times in different scenarios going back 65 million years to the end of the dinosaur age this is true how did the asteroid field get where it is, blown apart, moving at high speed in the orbit of a planet between Mars and Jupiter? Scientists don't have a clue. They make up stuff, failed moons and stuff like just gibberish. It's nonsense. It was a planet. It was destroyed long ago in this solar system. That's history 101 of our solar system. Then there's galactic history 101. The fact is, people living on Earth today, the different rep races represented here, Chinese, Japanese, Asian, Semitic, Aboriginal, Indian tribes, it doesn't matter what they are or where they are, they didn't originate in this solar system around this sun on this planet. 
some of those solar systems revolve around suns that have two or three suns, known in astrophysics and astronomical areas as binary and trinary sun systems. They know they're out there now in the last 10 years or so. And people came here once in a history as you can't imagine that have been brought to this planet, colonizations from other worlds. This planet is unique. It used to have polar flips psychically every 100,000 years, wipe everything out. Part of the imbalance created when that other world was destroyed. So that's been corrected. That means that something outside of Earth has ended the polar flips of this planet permanently so that we have the opportunity to step up to bat with other races out there. To know more about these polar ships can read from your series agenda. This book explains very well. You know, you get the picture, you understand clearly how it works, how it happened. Yeah. So I had to actually explore the deliberately hidden truth I reveal in the work I do personally, or I could not have written about it. I couldn't make that up in this little brain that grew up in school systems in the United States, going to work, and they don't teach it. It's not taught anywhere. I had to experience it in order to write about it, which means I had to see it and be there. I try to get this across to people, and they have a terrible time comprehending that this is possible for them as well. The only reason I do this work is because it is possible for them, and I know it is. That's what motivates me to do it. It's not about having a palace and billions of dollars and all that stuff. Nobody can keep that anyway. A lifetime goes by in a blink and it stays here. You don't take any of it with you. That's not the real value in why we exist at all. So that means there's something else people need to be aware of for the reason for their existence. The answer to it is simple. It's true for every being anywhere on any level, in any dimension, any heaven. We exist as soul or atma, what beings from other worlds call the spherical us. They call atma. We exist to one day be co conscious, capable, trustworthy co-creators with the source behind all life. Not co-worshippers of it. Co-creators. Because we are made of the same energy as it. Exactly. A teardrop, like a, a drop of water out of a pure ocean of light and sound. That is where we come from. And that is where we're destined to return. So there's a purpose to all these lives that isn't about living and dying and all that struggle. That goes away when the fear of death vanishes. And the fear of death vanishes through direct experience of what we really are that cannot be destroyed, is not made of matter. It's not DNA, it's not molecules, it's not nuclear energy, it's not the sun. It's like the energy that's in space that all those things float in, which is non-nuclear, non-atomic. It is energy. And to play in the universe, we have to work in harmony, understand that energy. It is required of all beings, anywhere. Lower energies can be abused, like weapons and spaceships and stuff like that, radar, beam weapons, or whatever. But that's positive and negative uses of lower energies. The energy behind all that is not part of that. It just supports life. We're meant to learn how to work with that correctly, which is why we exist. I want to share that with people because no one else is that I know of. And if it was true, if it's true in all beings, in any faith, in any world, in any religion, on any politi politics on this planet, if, they, if it's true, they once knew it, even though they've been made to forget it, it was suppressed in the subconscious domain before this life. And that's a history people are, are terrified to remember because it wasn't pleasant. With the right help and the right beings, they can remember this safely and get over it put it away as a memory and not be afraid. People are afraid to leave their bodies and the ironic thing about it is they do it every night anyway. Every single human being leaves their body when they put it to sleep. It goes into a trance state, it runs an automatic and you're out somewhere. If you're not taught any of this growing up as a child, why would you know it as an adult? Or have any faith or trust in it or any experience with dealing with it? 
you wouldn't. So this has to be recovered, recalled, remembered, or awakened in people on Earth. Because they once knew it. So what's the history? What happened? Why were they put on Earth with no memory? What took place? The only way people can have freedom from this terror of remembering who they are is to have the courage to remember it. And for that, you're gonna re it's going to require kind, wonderful beings who aren't from Earth to help us do that. And they're already patrolling the solar system. They're already here helping people when they're out of their bodies at night. Safer and easier to help a person enlighten themselves and get free of fear when they're out of their body at night. And they come back and they're suddenly a little brighter, a little more aware than they were. That's how it's done. Not going to come here and land in millions of spaceships all over the Earth and scare the hell out of everybody. That event will come. But first, there has to be preparation for it so it can be accepted in a wonderful, kind, constructive way. And that's all this is. The poles of the planet have ceased being flipped in a cycle that has been going on for ages. Now, the people are left with subconscious programs. The tyrants created them sometimes, and people brought them here from other lives, got into these bodies out of fear, out of a sense of false security that they would have safety here, running a body on Earth. And they realize once they're here, they have trouble remembering anything, and they realize, wait a minute, how did I forget all that stuff? All that stuff is capable of being recalled under the right conditions. My work is about that. The people I represent, the people I work with from other worlds, are about that. They're not about abducting people. They do patrol this solar system to keep beings like that from returning here. They're gone. Out of a bad habit, people continue to focus on threatening, fearful things that aren't even threatening and fearful anymore to this planet. They're just left with the effects psychologically. And that is a healing, a kind of um, transformation process that is well known how to do it in what way? By beings who are not on Earth, not from Earth. Call them angels, you can call them whatever you want, but if you want their help, you can't throw a tantrum and demand it for your own selfish ends. They just they won't respond to that. So people on Earth are destined to be a harmonized world system, greatly changed technologically, health, vitality, awareness, children raised differently than they are now. And we need the help from beings who know how to do this, who have already walked this path in an ancient past. We are in this together, but not just people on Earth by themselves. When we go into the first half of the word human or hue, it creates a sound vibration. It vibrates the pineal gland in the center of the brain, the cranium upward only. It opens a door a long forgotten door so that each person who is made of this hue, this first sound, as energy, as an individual, can connect to the one living energy that supports all life as a direct experience. And then things start to change. If I say you vibrating the head upward. It's opening doors. The hue does not work with any being or technology of any negative nature, and it is more powerful than and dominant over such things. It doesn't force its way on people. It just supports life. If we want its assistance to be free, we have to co-create with it, utilize our imagination with it properly and it will respond in kind. When I do the hue, 
in preparation for serving as a type of guide to help people leave their bodies, put it to sleep while we're during this journey in this radio show. It's done so that they can experience as adults or children too that might listen what they do every night that they've been made to forget and are afraid to recover or they're told it's dangerous or it's evil or anything like that. The thing of it is, no matter what they're told on earth, they do it every night anyway. And when the body finally stops, they have to go out permanently. The Atma, the real being, is not nuclear. It cannot be destroyed by a hydrogen bomb or a death ray or anything like that. Bodies can be destroyed, but not what we are. We're not nuclear energy. Get it? Yeah. During the journey, I will turn off my camera, okay? For the better quality. Well, tell them why you do it. Yeah, for the better quality of recording it. But I'm always here with you all to go on the journey with you. Good. They need to know that because on Zoom, this technology is good, but it's in its infancy. So we try to maximize the recording quality visually and the sound. By, if she turns off her camera, then it's just me speaking. Because I'll go on the journey with you. I put my body in the trance state called sleep. I've learned how to do this so that I can serve in this way for your uplifting benefit. Okay, Perry. Imagine someone you love and respect. You're grateful they are in your life. A person, place, or thing, but something or someone that actually makes you smile inside. Kind of opens a door to that one omnipresent sound, first word behind everything. There is no negative nature whatsoever in it, in the energy that all things float in out space. Nothing of any negative nature can approach you or interfere with this process when you work with the hue. There are beings that are, shall we say, assigned to you or that become aware of you, that help you <coughs> to safely go on constructive, uplifting journeys instead of just random journeys like you usually do when you put your body to sleep at night. If you take fear into the dream state as you go to bed, you're going to experience fearful things. This one energy is a co-creator with us and it will manifest what you imagine, good or bad or both. It's a teacher. So if you imagine deliberately setting aside your concerns for your life, money, health, age, <coughs> life, death, all that, like you're putting it in a computer disk and storing it in a flash drive or something, just for now, then that <clears throat> that stuff will remain off, turned off, as an influence while you go on this journey. I will be right back. I need to get some water.
Yep. Earth. Earth planet. Okay. We're back. Think of it this way. All of you are masters at leaving your bodies. Every night. Even though for the most part, most of you are <clears throat> not aware of what it is you're doing. And since you're not taught this on Earth, which is not normal then why should you be familiar with it as an adult if you're not taught on earth about the omnipresent first sound behind all creation how to connect with it why would you know it well you wouldn't consider this there was a time in solar system and galactic history, parallel and interdimensional, higher dimensional history where you knew it. Which means what you are that is not the body is ageless. How old are you? <laughs> Quite a mystery, isn't it? You'd be just flabbergasted, dumbfounded, standing beside yourself out of body you suddenly were hit with the realization of just how ancient as a being not a body you are and what your real purpose for existing is really all about this cannot be told to someone the truth can be shared but the techniques and the ways to recover it as a personal experience for yourself is required by the source behind all life, what beings from other worlds call prime creator. You can call it the supreme being, you can call it whatever you want. Each individual being is made of the same energy on a smaller scale as the source itself, identical. The real trick here is to become aware of this fact, to recover the ability to exercise higher faculties of being, not your brain and body of one lifetime, and bring it back to this brain and body to enlighten it. Enlightenment is about bringing a more expanded awareness of the nature of the multiverse and your true nature and your relationship with the source behind all life to this earth body. It's our great challenge Energy is speeding up on this planet. The energy coming from the sun has increased tremendously in the last 20 years. The change in the rate of vibration here can be very cleansing. And that can be, to Earth people's way of thinking, quite destructive. But it's not the increase in sun energy that causes the turmoil on this planet. It is people their misuse and unconscious incorrect use of their creative imagination. Daydreaming when you're bored in a classroom, for example, when you imagine being somewhere else on a ski trip or at the beach or anywhere but there, and your eyes are open, you're looking at the blackboard and the teacher and looking out the window and seeing that ski trip or seeing yourself being on another planet, it is not the brain that sees that at all. It only sees what comes through the physical eyes of the limited range of visual perspective of, of frequency from the physical world. But when you're imagining something, it is not the brain that's doing it. They got that all wrong on Earth. They don't have it right at all. Imagination, the ability to see into the multidimensional universe, communicate with it, connect to this source, this spirit, this living energy behind all life. We have to utilize the imagination, the ability to see it, but not with physical eyes. In fact, the eyes are closed generally. When the body's asleep, the brain is turned off. Light's not coming in through the eyes. 
So when you have a vivid dream you bring back to that body in the morning, you were actually somewhere else. And for some reason, without training of any kind, you're able to bring, maybe you had a good time, you went to sleep happy. And you brought back this experience of flying in a physical body in some other reality, like the astral plane. Next major division or heaven above earth. Just a level. To recover the ability, the use of higher faculties that have been turned off for one reason or another, or are dormant because you don't focus any awareness on them anymore requires the recovery of an awareness that they exist and then the imagination to, with the help of other beings who know this stuff, turn all that stuff back on. A normal human being on countless millions of other world systems just in the Milky Way galaxy alone all have photographic memories. They use 100% of 100% of the fully developed brain not six to ten we're told on earth that we use. They're telepathic. They speak consciousness to consciousness as well as with vocal cords. That's normal for them. It can be normal for people on earth. There's only one thing in the way of any of it. Fear. What you need to know is that fear is an artificially created and implanted negative program of terror and fear in what's called the subconscious domain. Normal human beings in other worlds and other realities do not have subconscious minds at all. So think about how beneficial that would be for people on Earth to get the assistance of such beings. When we go on a journey using the first half of the word human, hue, creates a higher vibration and opens a doorway to the source behind all life. And it's higher than Alm or any of these other things you may have heard of which reaches the mental plane. That's still within the lower dimensions of time and space. We want to go above what's called the void to some esoteric groups on earth into the higher realities. Heavens, if you will. And this must be, at some point in every individual's life, a direct conscious experience. It has nothing to do with the body. To do it, the body needs to be asleep, but you need to remain awake and aware. The body is a machine, a tool, made of molecules and DNA. Very complicated, very complex. The you, the being, run one every day on earth without remembering anything, nearly anything, about who and what you are, where you came from, how you got here, why you got here, where you came from, what your future destiny is, what your purpose for existing is all about. And it's a simple answer. Each and every one of us is destined to become a conscious co-creator with the source behind all life. So we can help create with it a better creation than exists now. It's one of the deepest secrets in eternity, right there. It's not something you should be deprived of knowing. It's something you must know. The hue is a tool. It did not originate on this planet or from any individual being. It emanates from as an energy, living energy field, one power, from a source, many, many dimensions beyond the lower worlds of time and space. And for this to become a reality in anyone's life, they have to have direct experience with it. So I will do a little bit of a guided journey. I ask you again to imagine someone you love and respect and you're grateful they're in your life, person, place, or thing that makes you smile inside. And then I'm going to go into a series of hues on higher tones that will connect with other realities in a safe, protected manner. You.
よじゃあ、ステイドリーミング。イマジンフロートティングアトマーソウニアザシーリングウェアヴァーユーリブ。ルキングダウンオンヨーバディ。シッティングデアホープフリーユーヴァーユーアイズクローズ。ドアライングオン
you can have a greater comprehension and ability to dominate the negative influences of a primary implant. Often what's in a primary implant isn't even a real experience you really went through. Because it's fear and threat and torture, etc., people are afraid to remember who they are. This was done in a galactic history before you were born. In a galactic and solar system history you no longer know existed. The threat of this happening again is gone. It cannot be done to you again. But what was done needs to be neutralized. This is true for all the people living on Earth today. This is up to each one of you who may tune into this guided journey. If you ask this male and female, about 36, handsome, beautiful, well-dressed, not from Earth, they can help you by removing things you may be attached to that you see between you and the universe, the true universe, that you've been afraid to let go of, and they can help by removing it. And they seal the energy field around your being as effortlessly as spreading butter on bread. And then they laugh because this is uplifting for them to do this for you. Perry has been through this a number of times. Others have. There was never any money involved. No charge was ever levied against anybody. But most of this work is done privately. It is not on the internet. It's not in the public knowledge. It's not on YouTube or Facebook. Just the books that I do sell are available. And they lead or open a doorway to what we're doing in this more private way. What people call evil as an experiment was never meant to be permanent. And it is being replaced out in the universe by something that motivates people to use their imagination in a constructive, uplifting ways for all life. This is required if people on Earth are going to play among the stars with other fellow beings. It's not a question of what you believe or don't believe. It is required. When you begin to work in the hue, in a sense, the source behind all life sees you for the first time as a being who can return to the place you once left long ago. While your body's alive and healthy, by the way, All of this is potential and can be recovered by people on Earth. First, it has to cross their path in some way. And it takes courage of any individual out there to find something like this work. I don't create that. You do. I just make it available. Imagine being out in space above the planet. That's right, out in outer space, looking at the planet in the distance with the polar ice caps and the blue oceans and the land masses and the barren moon pockmarked with meteor craters, no little nor no atmosphere, circling Earth in an orbit without turning on its axis. It has a very low gravitational field because it doesn't spin. It always shows the people of Earth the same one side of the moon. And in the distance, you can see the yellow sun. And then you see what you think was black space between all of it that you see in Hubble photographs of outer space. But that's just the way human eyes on Earth see it because they can't see into a high enough frequency of light. But you out in space hovering here in a circle with all of us present on this journey can see that that is a white, golden, powerful light everywhere between the Earth, the Moon, the Sun, and the stars. You can see billions of stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. 
you can look beyond the galaxy and see our nearest neighbor, the Andromeda galaxy. As an atma, you can move through this one field of energy that all things float in and see these things. This energy we are floating in out in space cannot have recorded in it anywhere negative or positive emotions or experiences. It is not nuclear energy. You can't impress it and store it in a brain cell made of atoms. This is pure energy right outside the atmosphere of Earth, which is very polluted. Negative emotions and imaginations throughout its history are still floating around inside that atmosphere, bouncing off the ionosphere like radio waves to get around the curvature of the Earth. Out here, we are beyond those influences. The body back on Earth is asleep. You may hear sound, rain, someone talking out on the street. The ears will still be tuned because even though you are far above the Earth, your body still requires certain capabilities to protect itself. There is no threat. The energy coming through you to that body through the pineal gland is a certain kind of protection and there are other beings here with us who help protect that as well. All fear of the past, present, and future is asleep, turned off with that sleeping body. Out here, you cannot bring it into this energy. The man and woman who are out here with you can see standing to each side of all of you. And we're circling around a being, a friend of mine, who is named Ambassador Torellian. He is of the most ancient human race, known as the Seres. It's spelled S-E-R-E-S, -E but pronounced as if it was spelled S-A-Y hyphen R-A-Y-S, Seres. He's showing you an 18-foot tall human body, perfectly formed like a Greek god. And above this body he's showing you is a spherical atma, bright and beautiful, just like all of you. And in front of the sphere you are, hovering above the form you're showing each other, is a body that looks like you, flawless in every way, trim, perfect, a 36, of just a young adult. These are projections of pure energy, so we recognize each other. They come from the white core of the Atma, the spherical being we are. Torellian showing you a form that he had at one time over a billion years ago, stationed with his race on many world systems on many dimensions. Back then they immortalized their physical forms by dematerializing them, the DNA pattern, which had more strands than us, and store it in a teardrop on one of the levels of the Atma, the spherical being they are. He's showing you what it was like. So when he gets around the universe, this guy, he can produce a body out of the hue based on that DNA pattern and walk it around a planet, carry out a mission, and then dissolve it. He doesn't have the burden, like we do, of pushing around a body, having it to eat and go to the bathroom and all that. He knows who he is. He's pure energy, just like you. He serves standing in the center of the circle of us around him as an example. He has his two hands out with his thumbs up with a golden halo of light around them. White golden light, brighter than the light that surrounds the earth, the moon, the sun, the stars, the galaxies, and all of us. It comes from a much higher reality, above what certain esoteric groups on earth call the void, particularly Buddhists, but others as well. It comes from a reality where there is no time and space or negative nature of any kind. We all originally came from there. So the energy he's putting out here from there is creating a safe sphere of energy around all of us so that we can experience productive, uplifting things to help us recall and remember who and what we are and what our purpose for existing is. In this form, we are all telepathic in nature. That means we talk to each other, consciousness to consciousness. Torellian will greet each one of you one at a time. He'll simply say, welcome. You'll hear it. 
It's a deep, melodious voice. Remember, this guy is 18 feet tall compared to us. Some of his race are 25 feet tall, 18 to 25 feet. So depends on which world they're from or from. There are other master teachers that work with this Galactic Alliance personnel. They always have them traveling on their larger ships on missions to remind them, to keep them tuned to the fact that one, they are a living being and not a body, and to help them be remain aware of their native home territory located far above the void. The more advanced world systems out there in the hundreds of millions just in the Milky Way galaxy, work together in harmony. Children grow up on those worlds, being motivated to produce new things in science and other things for the benefit of life on all those worlds, not just their own. They do not use money. It is illegal. They don't barter or trade. They share. There is a difference. Their motivations are much more lofty. By the time a child that's human on one of those worlds is 10, they have the equivalent of 10 PhDs to a person on Earth. Remember, they have photographic memories and they're telepathic. They're normal humans. Human beings were helped develop to the form we have on Earth by the Seyrays long ago. Kind of spiritual scientists, you could call them. They brought them up, many different types of bipedal creatures walking on two legs, to where the Atma could run higher faculties through them and become spacefaring for the physical universe, also for the astral universe. These guys got around. Some of the master teachers, one has a Maroon colored robe standing to the left of Terrellian has just appeared. Short crop, black curly beard, clap, black curly hair, coal black eyes, swarthy skin, sandals, and he's holding a crystal staff made of quartz, it's a device, in his right hand. It's about six feet tall, the staff, crested with the symbol in ancient Egyptian history called the Ankh, symbol for eternal life, a cross with an elongated oval hole in a kind of an oval hole up on top of it. There's a being standing to the right of Terellian named Master Opelum, and he is from a planet called Oceana, water covered mostly with a few small islands near the equator. He has pale blue skin. About six feet tall, slightly gray temples, looks to be about 40. It's a very stately, simple, single-piece gown, kind of covering his frame. He's holding up his right hand, and you can see little webs between his fingers. Lifts his neck, see little slits, three little slits under his neck you wouldn't notice otherwise. This species of human being evolved with the ability to breathe underwater or on land. And yet the genetic code is so close we could even mate with them. These are master teachers that are part of the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds, stationed on a planet near, not in, but near, the central core of the Milky Way galaxy. And you're meeting with some of them right now. In other words, they are aware of you. Some of you have joined this group or will tune into this recorded session. We'll meet with them for the first time. Things change after that. During some of these radio show journeys, we've gone far away to other planets and to higher dimensions. But I want to keep this very close to home. For new people, for people that have tuned in before, it's very important to be more and more consciously aware of the presence of such beings 
while operating out of your body in space beyond the physical planet Earth. There are many higher dimensions above the physical universe. Just to show or just to share with you all how vast it is, there are 144 parallel dimensional levels of the physical universe. 144 parallel Milky Way galaxies. Life in all of them. The more advanced races can travel in craft between all of them up to the beginning of the astral plane. And that's another major division. When we go up into that reality of the multiverse, everything is run by emotion. Motion moves matter. Physical bodies like Earth humans live there. You have one there. Even if you've been made to forget all about it. And all emotion comes from that form you're running there. There are good and bad parts of the astral plane, 144 levels of it. Some of them very pure, some very dark. Emotion is the ruler there. And we will not be going there. We bypass that so that these journeys can be only productive. Gaining back mastery over emotional feelings and what you imagine is key to recovering who you are. So in space, there's Opelum, Ramu, Master Ramu with the staff. There is a creature named Etta who's about three feet long from the root of his tail to the tip of his nose, hovering near the right shoulder of Torellian. Smooth, pale green skin, not wet, strong of build, muscular, dexterous hands and fingers, toes, but he's like, no, he doesn't look like a salamander. He's like, and he's not a lizard, but he has a long snout. And when his mouth is closed, he looks like he's amused about something. His tail from the root to the tip glows like crystal opal in bright sunlight. And he's silica based from another world, from the planet where Opelum comes from, the water covered world. They evolved in huge, empty volcanic chambers at the bottom of the ocean seafloor. Self-contained ecosystems, luminous minerals and plant life give it a bright light like daylight. They evolve with the ability to defy gravity and fly through the air as an organic creature. He has a photographic memory, vocal cords. He can speak with you or talk with you telepathically. And he's also a master teacher, but he is not a human. He has the courage to a fault. He would die for you to protect you if he had to. He has the greatest manifested abilities of what human beings should be, and he's not human. He's also a master teacher. Life out in the galaxy of what people call God is very vast indeed. It's time people of Earth started to become aware of this fact so life can be breathed into their religions and they can have direct experience with the greater life of what they think they're worshiping that's out there amongst the stars and in other higher dimensions and realities. We're going to go on a journey from this point in space outside of Earth around Torellian with a few master teachers and we're going to go into our solar system to the planet Saturn with its rings and you're going to find yourself instantly transported in a flash of white golden light so we're still hovering around Torellian Ramu, Opelum, Eta and we're hovering up above the ice rings, these big chunks of ice that make up the rings that circle the planet Saturn. They're water. And down underneath the surface layer, you can see a mile long, pale blue cylindrical metallic ship with a pale blue golden glow around it, anti gravitic light. Curved observation or bridge windows on the front, and you know on the other end of a mile away is an identical bridge control room. Slightly flattened on top, curved sides, and there's these windows around just above the upper middle circumference of the craft that are 
horizontal, about six feet wide, three feet high, curved outward, and their observation portals that circle the entire craft. A Torellian is pointing to the central section of this ship, and we find ourselves moving as a group, circling Torellian, until we pass right into the hull, right through the metal, harmlessly. And then we're hovering inside a huge hangar bay, looking back up near the curve of that hull, we see a scout craft begin to approach. That hull turns transparent. The ship that is metallic raises in vibration, passes through the molecules of the hull, comes into this huge space, the size of a football stadium, hovers down, turning solid, and lands next to 11 other craft parked in two parallel rows. There are no open launch bay doors on this type of craft. It is designed to travel through interdimensional doorways to vast areas of, not just this galaxy. Then you can see other craft approaching the central section, coming into the hall and landing. Then you see people getting down under a ladder in the middle bottom of the craft, three extended legs, and they appear to be human, about 36. And two of them from one of the lead craft approach and walk up to all of us hovering there. You can see your body forms, it looks like you, standing on the floor and you hovering above it. You see these couple approach you and Atlas hovering above their bodies. Human, but not from Earth. And it is the two beings we first met on that journey in space outside of Earth. They have piloted that craft here gone back in their bodies, joined the three other couples piloting that ship, and have landed here. Uh, her name is Shantiol, and she is Tonaltiol. Two-part name with a hyphen between it. They come from an area of space where people call the Pleiades. They're not from planets around the Seven Sisters, the seven stars visible to the naked eye from Earth, 500 light years away or so. They come from star systems in and beyond that area, thousands of them. And they're part of the Galactic Alliance. And we see a conveyor belt running from one end of this interior hangar bay through a pyramid-shaped opening on the far end, another pyramid-shaped opening on the other end. And we find ourselves moving our bodies over and stepping onto this conveyor belt. And you're grounded to it gravitationally and whisked away at high speed. We pass through the pyramid opening, which is golden luminous walls, until we find ourselves stepping onto a plush blue carpet. Head, it's a little bit more towards the bridge control room of this ship. And you can see these oval windows lining the hall, this wall, 60 foot high interior, hundreds of feet long, continues down the length of the ship. You can see the rings of Saturn, ice rings surrounding the ship. The antigravitic light around the hall prevents them from touching any ice crystal. Torellian is standing behind us, 18 feet tall, with his two thumbs up with that golden light around him, still hovering above his body, just like you are. But you're wiggling your bare feet into this plush carpet, and it feels warm and cooling. Some kind of energy is moving into your body that makes you serene, peaceful, wise. And you see a commander and his wife step, getting up from two egg-shaped blue cushioned chairs, by an oval blue glass top table and they greet you with their right hand up open and they begin to talk to you and let you know that they are the commanders of this one ship and then you see 300 of the ship's personnel appear standing on the carpet around the room between tables and they smile and greet you there's an atma hovering above them they are men with and women with different colors of skin different colors of eyes, silver looking hair, violet colored eyes, gold colored eyes, red eyes. 
snake-like skin, but smooth, no reptilian skin here. Human. Bald. Races with longer earlobes. Some with very long, beautiful hair, but violet colored. Longer fingers and necks than humans on Earth. Very kind. They are ship's personnel. They're in a uniform, single piece body uniform that their feet slip into and pull it up over their shoulders, put their arms through it. They kind of clasp up from the back and front. That's got a symbol on it in the right chest area of a pyramid, a golden pyramid with a quartz cap hovering above the white nucleus of a galaxy with three blue stars in triangular form motion. This is a symbol for the galactic interdimensional alliance of free worlds. This, <coughs> these people are not yet known much by UFO and extraterrestrial disclosure circles yet. It is the organization behind other organizations that have been revealed to people. They are part of what we are going to go through as full disclosure. Fortunately. If you wish to converse with any of these beings, just use your imagination. That's a form of telepathy. Telepathy is not psychic. It's not part of a positive and negative energy that moves from one extreme to another. It is part of the communication in the primary hue behind all life between you, made of the same thing, and the source itself. The ship is permanently, for now, stationed in the ice rings of the planet Saturn in our solar system. It's not going anywhere. There are no reptilian or gray ships in this solar system any longer. The negative things people are experiencing on Earth come from subconscious implantation, not little chips electronically under the skin. These are misguided fear-driven programs placed in an energy field artificially created and placed around the spherical being you are, through which you look at the universe distorted. Secondary implants that were removed and will continue to be removed when you go out of your body at night, if you wish it, give you the ability to see into and have the wisdom of understanding the multidimensional nature of creation even the source itself behind and supporting all life because we are capable of this. Now we find ourselves circling around Torellian above Saturn, out in space, in the hue, like golden light. We find ourselves hovering about Torellian again outside the Earth's planet's atmosphere. And you're going to watch, you look at the earth and you suddenly realize like a heat wave in a desert, it's changing, we're raising in vibration. To see an earth in the same place that exists in a higher parallel time rate of molecules and matter. You see a moon, but it's not barren. It's covered with a beautiful atmosphere. Rivers, little mountain ranges, and dome cities with golden quartz cap pyramids in them. And you look down on this world, this earth and the sun in the distance, and you can see that there is one huge continent centered over the equator from the left to the right hemisphere. It goes down about a third of the way of the South Pole and then curves upward to the right hemisphere. It goes upward towards the North Pole, a third of the way below it, and down towards the left hemisphere. You can see through the planet and see there's another continent, two thirds its side, centered over the equator. The word Lemuria appears in golden letters over that equator, flies up into space, and dissolves into brilliant particles of light. The word Atla, or Atlantis, is on the other side. This is a planet 
regulated by the Galactic Alliance and Master Teachers and the Say Rays, among others, there is no pollution in this atmosphere, no negative nature, no negative emotions or negative thoughts. It is the Lemurian Atlantis that did not sink like it did on the planet you're familiar with 100,000 years ago when the poles flipped over 180 degrees overnight. Land masses sank, ocean floors rose, and new continents we live on today were produced in that event. Quite catastrophic. This world and this moon are in a higher parallel time rate dimension of the physical universe. And there is a domed city near a single snow-capped mountain, near a beach you can see from space. It's down near the South Pole, a third of the way up, and there's a curved half moon bay shaped emerald green beach glowing at you in space from Earth. You can focus as the Atma and see that down in the jungle to the right is a single snow-covered mountain. There's a huge dome covering a city, transparent dome, with three golden-sided, four-sided pyramids with quartz caps, a luminous blue-green lake, oval lake, and little ivory dome dwellings with roadways between them going around the lake to that city center. The three pyramids surround a long, ivory-colored, elongated dome building. And you realize when you look down, your feet is wiggling in this emerald green sand. And you look up and you realize that you are standing in the curve of this mile wide beach. And you look down and you see this sand is glowing a foot above the sound with emerald green light. You reach down and pick up the sand. And you realize it's made of little polished, rounded, pure emeralds radiating a light. It goes in your hand. It goes up through the top of your head. You look up smiling. It goes into the white core of your being. You hovering above that form, that pure energy form. Into the white core, out to a layer that is green. It turns on certain little teardrop-shaped lights. These are higher faculties that have long been dormant for you. And you look up and see that in the back middle of this curve, there's a brown moss-covered path that goes back through the jungle several miles, winds up the hillside to the dome city. And there are blue disc-shaped landing pads with several Galactic Alliance scout craft parked on them. And up in this single snow-covered mountain range to the right, there's water roaring out of a cavern opening two-thirds of the way towards the summit, dropping down its luminous blue-green phosphorescent, self-luminous mineral in the water. It's dropping down thousands of feet and disappearing in, into a blue-green forest that surrounds the backside of this dome. And above it is an oval cavern, man-made, that has little curved domed lights leading down inside spiral inside this mountain. And you look up and see one of the scout craft fly out of it, fly down and hover above the dome, land on one of three pads, two are occupied, and a couple of human beings get out of that ship and walk over to a pyramid opening in the side of the base of the pyramid. Torellian, if you look behind you, is standing in knee deep in this ocean water smiling. And then we find ourselves moving as a group, bodies too, up off the sand over the top of the jungle following this brown moss covered path until we come to stop near the base of the road this trail that goes up the mountainside to a clearing it's a white marble like floor and there's a statue of a woman standing in this clearing it is a device polished quartz a beautiful woman you can even see the details of an image of this woman just inside the surface of the polished quartz, and she's 10 feet tall. She has silver metallic-like hair, but it's not like, it's like silver metal, but it's soft. And she has violet-colored eyes, longer neck, longer fingers, longer feet, longer torso. She's 10 feet tall, beautiful, with elegant gown on. She has a gold band around her forehead and a teardrop-faceted stone, emerald stone, pointing downward, set in the center of the gold band. 
And then you realize you're looking at an actual woman standing in a green energy field inside this device in some other dimension. And Torellian moves down and disappears in the top of her head. And all of us suddenly find ourselves looking into that green crystal until we find ourselves inside this field of energy that's green. You can look back and see through the quartz crystal of this statue. And this woman is standing in bare feet in the middle of the air. She has two hands up, just like the two hands are up on the statue with a green halo of light around them, and it's charging that beach. And this energy has to do with remembering what and who you were in the long trek of lives you've lived, mostly not on Earth and in other dimensions, in the lower dimensions of time and space. She lowers her hands. You realize it's coming from this being. She's telepathic. You see her mate, a male, stand and appear a little taller beside her. And they're showing you their planet. It's called Zian Tranamon 1. It's on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy. It is in an orbital position around a trinary sun system. It is a planet four times larger than Earth. No polar ice caps. Dome cities symmetric, you know, symmetrically placed around the surface. Little oceans between little continents and three moons the size of Earth at different distances, no polar ice caps, with life on them as well. In the distance, you can see a, what's called a blue giant, white giant star. Further out, a yellow sun like ours, and further out, what's called a red dwarf. They are circling this sun, and this planetary system, in turn, circles all three. It's called the trinary sun system. They're showing their planet to you, you find yourself suddenly walking along a trail on the planet's surface, Torellian ahead, and there's a violet-colored water river running, luminous, beside a winding ravine like, um, like Death Valley, except that way off in the distance there are these plateaus and a huge dome city in the distance. And we're walking along this river, and we see these two beings we just saw walking along this path, 10 feet tall. They move like swans. They are human, but the bodies they're showing you on this planet are over three and a half million years old, unaged, because they've immortalized these bodies for a specific purpose. They're showing you what the potential of the genetics of human beings really are. And they're communicating this to you so that you have an understanding that such beings exist. Then you find yourself in this green void surrounding this woman and this man standing inside this crystal of this woman, this polished quartz crystal, 10 feet wide, standing on a pedestal on a white marble floor. And we're suddenly outside of that, moving over the jungle, up the road, this pathway to the dome city at the base of the snow-capped mountain. We're moving right through it until we come to walk on a winding white marble path. There are giant weeping willow type trees with luminous leaves and birds flying around us with broad, how would I put it, maybe a foot long. They look kind of like a blue jay. They have rainbow colored feathers, many colors of the rainbow, and twin sets of bird wings so they can fly through the air at high speed or hover like a hummingbird. And male and females, slightly longer tails come down and hover around us and you realize there are atmos hovering above these birds and they have vocal cords and they're singing a beautiful sound of the hue to you. The perfect vocal cords and they're telepathically welcoming you to this city. This continent is called Lemuria but not the one that sank in a polar flip on the earth you're familiar with. This is one being developed that is ready there are beings that work from the Galactic Alliance here, the Say Rays and other very spiritual scientists, I would say, that are preparing this to be utilized to duplicate it over the Earth you're familiar with. And the moon that's alive, that turns on its axis, and circles the planet. So that's Earth's destiny in the near future. 
It's not destined to always have a dead moon that doesn't turn. That creates imbalances in the water in people's bodies on Earth. They're just sharing this with you so you have an idea. And then we find ourselves suddenly in space. Looking at this planet with this big Lemurian Atlantean continent, which is a colony of Lemuria. It's, it's really all one people there. Not many people live on this world. It is a kind of a laboratory. The moon is alive with life. and turns on its axis and circles planet Earth here. And then you see a heat wave move in space across it and you see the planet you're familiar with. We've just lowered the molecular time rate down a little bit. And you can see the polar ice caps, the world you know, the barren moon, the sun, the stars, and the white golden light that is everywhere between those spherical objects, sun, moon, star, and you, which is also spherical. This means that Earths and moons and planets and stars that make up galaxies that spin on an axis are spherical. They're made in the image of their creators. This means that we all are connected together at a nexus or a central place high in the other worlds in a higher reality. And that we collectively make up what we call the supreme being. It is much more than the sum of its parts. We are meant to knowingly respect that source and each other. If people on earth did that, they would be able to respect the vast nature of life in the multiverse and the world we be brought into a much greater awareness. Then you find yourself hovering above your body near the ceiling back on earth. This man and woman that started with you is there. They raised their right hand in greeting. Be kind, do the same thing in return, thank them, and they vanish. You look down on your body there, sleeping with eyes closed, and you let this little trickle of white golden light come down, this green energy as well, into the pineal gland, through your brain, out through the body, into what's called the toroidal or electromagnetic field around your body, is also one surrounding you as the atma hovering near the ceiling. And then it continues outward. It's always in motion, always moving. Through you for your benefit, but also for the benefit of all life. That energy continues to connect to three pyramids that are now stationed on Earth that are tools, devices. They're very large. They're stationed in two of the Earth's deepest oceans and one in a hollowed out interior of a mountain in the Himalaya. There is another pyramid stationed between two stable asteroids floating in space in the asteroid field between Mars and Jupiter. It is, it is in the physical universe, but it's not made of matter. There isn't any craft or vehicle or weapon that can affect it in any way. And such pyramids like this are also beginning to appear between suns, stars, and the Milky Way. Something is changing out there. It's good to be aware of it. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Scott, thank you for the journey. And uh, I'd like you to tell people once more how important the journey is or what the purpose of going on the journey. Direct experience leaps beyond faith. Faith is a good place to start, but it should, under normal conditions, lead to experience or knowing certainty. That's the highest faculty of being the Atma has in co-creativity with the source behind all life. It is the one thing that most importantly needs to be awakened in people on earth. Thank you. You can always you can always watch our journeys on my channel. You know, we go on many journeys. So you can always look for that. Thank you for having me again, Perry. And it's great that we're co-creating this because it benefits everybody, one way or another. Yes.
So everyone, Merry Christmas <laughs> in advance. Happy holidays <laughs> and um, have a great journey. You know, when you go to Perry's YouTube channel, I guess you can play it back whenever you want, like any YouTube video. You may see a commercial in the front, but she didn't monetize. No it. more, no more. No, no commercial. Not at all. Okay, because YouTube has the right to put one in the front that you click off after four seconds if they want to without your permission. But it won't be interrupted by commercials throughout the length of this journey, which is very important. That way you can sit back in a chair, get a cup of tea, play this journey back again when you won't be interrupted. Turn off your phones and then get benefit from it. Okay. Oh, good thank night, you. Perry. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching. If you like, please thumb up, subscribe and share and see you again next year. See you next year. <laughs> Bye. Um, I will stop the recording and bring this journey to an end.